people tend to assume that when the Buddha was talking about karma, he was just repeating a general idea in Indian culture, something that everybody already believed. They didn't have to explain much. That's actually not the case. I mean, he used the word karma, which was part of their language. But he meant it in a very special sense. As he said, it's your intentions. And what I want to say is your intentions that shape your life. Lives. Has these things have been shaping your lives all along. And they shape the lives of all beings. When the people came to listen to the Buddha teach, you often found that he had to explain this particular aspect of karma again and again. He got a lot of questions about karma that he had to rephrase. So, so the analytical questions. And the fact that he had to rephrase them meant that people didn't even know how to ask questions about karma in the right way, at least in the way that he said was going to be useful. And what is the useful way to look at karma? First he has you look at your own life in terms of karma. The things that come your way, the results of past karma or previous lifetimes, the things you're experiencing now a combination of past potentials and your own present intentions. And then this same principle applies to everybody, everywhere. There's a very common reflection the Buddha has you, has you do, which is to think about yourself in terms of karma. Think about where you're looking for happiness. Those five reflections that we often chant. Start with the fact that you're subject to aging, illness, and death, separation from all that you love. Pretty grim, but it's not meant to be depressing. It's more meant to be sobering. Then there's a reflection on karma. That's really all you've got. And John Swat liked to make this point that there's so much the Buddha says is not self, not self, not self. But then when you get to karma, I'm the owner of my actions. Okay, that's something that's yours. Your intentions are things that you have power over. And that's quite a statement right there. You, your intentions shape your life, and you have power over your intentions. But all too often we abdicate that power to somebody else, to greed, aversion, delusion. The voices in the mind that want to just go over old stories. This person did this to me, that person did that, this to me. That wasn't right, that wasn't right. We can carry these things for years. Sometimes we're not even conscious that we're carrying the rent. The mind gets still for a while, you have a chance to come out here, and they come up. I remember my first year back in Thailand, all of a sudden issues from grade school, high school, college, family issues, all kinds of things started coming up. Things I had forgotten for years. When the mind is still, they can kind of come bubbling up again. When you find yourself hounded by these things, remember the Buddha's reflection. Think of it in terms of karma. On the one hand, you wouldn't have experienced these things without some karma of your own. And secondly, other people are creating their karma, and usually doing it out of ignorance. When you think about this, after a while, you Got a sense of dispassion for the whole process. You can change the narratives. So that instead of being hounded by these things, you, the narrative is that you reflected on them in line with the principle of karma, and you found that you could go beyond them. But then the Buddha has you reflect on all beings everywhere. This takes a lot of the sting out of your own personal sufferings. Everybody going through life is suffering. They've got aging, illness, death, separation. And they've got their karma, too. You can think about devas having a good time up there in heaven. 
Well, they're like trust fund kids. As long as the stock market is doing well, the trust fund is fine, okay, they're fine. But when everything collapses, in other words, when their good karma runs out, who knows where they're going to fall. So even on the planes of the universe where things are pretty comfortable, there's nothing really solid. And as I said, when you think about your narratives in the context of all the narratives of all the beings in the universe, all the people who've been wronged, all the people who've done good things, and still suffered because they had some past karma that hadn't quite worked itself out yet. It gives a sobering sense of dismay, see? but it also takes a lot of the burden off of your own, your own sufferings. The Buddha recommends that when you're suffering grief over the loss of a loved one, Reflect, reflect on the fact that, okay, this happens to everybody. And you would think that reflecting on all the griefs of all these millions and millions of beings would be heavier, but actually it's not. It's lighter. You realize this is just the way things are. The universe isn't conspiring against you. This is just the way things are. This is the way karma acts. This is how karma works itself out, based on your intentions. The purpose of all this is to get you to focus in on your intentions right now. What is the quality of your intention right now? Because your past intentions, you can't do anything about them. But you can change your present intentions. Part of that is this process of learning how to retell the stories from the past. So instead of being a victim all the time, you were a victim, but now you've risen above that. You can look at things with a lot broader sense. What's going on here in the life of living beings? And decided that you're not going to let yourself be victimized again. In particular, you're not going to keep victimizing yourself with the stories of the past. When you have that attitude, then as you focus on the breath, you focus on the breath with a light mind. The sense of having come to a place that does offer safety. Concentration may be something fabricated, but it takes you to a good place. And you can start engaging your verbal fabrication, all the thoughts and conversations in the mind, bring them a focal point right here with the breath. Learn how to figure out what's going on here in the body, what you can do with this energy you've got here. What positive things can you do with the energy? So there's a sense of health and wholeness in the body. A sense of balance, well-being. This isn't the ultimate safe place, but it's the road to this ultimate safe place. And it's a good place to be. It's a good place to be walking. Of course, you think of all the other places you could be wandering right now, physically, mentally. It feels really good to be right here. working on the fact of the mind that shapes everything, and put that in good shape. Once that's in good shape, in other words, when your intentions are in good shape, then over time everything else will fall in line. 